um, uh, to get our full reimbursement. So uh, I will turn it over to uh, Jim and Jeff, and thank you very much for being here today. Thank you, Greg. I'm Jim. This is Jeff. I'm I'm the say I'm the principal at Art of H Myers Western Regional lead, Practice Leader. Um, we are a forensic accounting firm. As he was saying, we we practice only for the policyholders, or we work only for the policyholders in preparation of their property and business interruption claims. So Jeff is here to help me out with the presentation. Yeah, Jim, Jim was had to go to London last week, so while he was away, I was fixing the presentation. So I figured I better come out and help navigate it. It's a little bit different of a, of a presentation style, and it's dynamic, and we have some flexibility. So we don't have to drag you through 50 slides with no options to move around. So that's how we've built it. He just thinks he's more entertaining than I am. So I'm just trying to earn my uh, salary. But before we get started, I wanted to share a story with you because I've, I've had I have two children, and we've been to both Disneyland and Disney World. So this is a Disney World story, but it obviously applies because it's very similar. So have you, anybody been on the It's a Small World ride, right, with their kids? And you remember what it's like because they're sitting in the boat, and, and you, you, you just look at their faces as they watch all the, the little people singing, and everybody's enjoying the day. And so on this particular day, it was it's actually a really good risk management story because if you're a parent, it's the ultimate risk management position. Is it not? But one place you never really expect something bad to happen is the It's a Small World ride in Disneyland or Disney World, am I right? So we're, we're on the boat and we're coming through to the end where you could see the people standing in line getting ready to get on the boat. And I'm sitting on the left side of the boat with my little boy and my wife is with my daughter and she's on the, the far right end. And all of a sudden you hear this scream. She's like, ah! And I mean, everybody in the whole boat jumps up and we look and my daughter's bawling, she's screaming. I mean, I thought something like really bad happened. And I, I look at my wife and she looks at me and she says, Melina threw her flip-flop in the water. <laughs> and so the, everybody in the boat's panicking. And people are trying to get the flip-flop, and we're all screaming. I'm like, what? Why? And so now imagine you're standing waiting to get on the next boat. <laughs> and all these happy boats come through, and then there's one where everybody's screaming. And you get this little girl like bawling, crying. And so I get out of the ride, and I thought I was going to be the dad and handle, save the day. And so you got to stop the ride. i got to get my daughter's flip-flop out of the water. He said, sir, we, we don't stop the ride no matter what. So, so anyway, we probably look like horrible parents because we scream, like, why would you throw it? You know, because you can never understand it. This is one of those moments you can't prepare for it because you just would never expect that. So luckily, my wife had uh, an extra pair of shoes, so that's where she insured to, for an event like this. Although Jim pointed out earlier today that I'm sure the gift shop would be glad to sell us an extra pair of shoes. <laughs> but so I, I like to share that story because you know, we're so close to Disneyland and we were, we were just talking about it on the way out. And I do see that, you know, you can't prepare for everything, and that, but that's your job. And so everybody, for, for the risk managers and the brokers and really everybody in industry, there's a lot on your plate and the consequences are big, right? Mistakes are big. And hopefully, you know, well, at least with property claims, big means money. So if something doesn't go as well as it could, it costs your company money. And, and so what we're here today to share with you is the things that if you haven't had a large property loss in a long time, it's, you know, it's, a, it's a process. It's not so simple as just collecting some invoices and submitting to the insurance company. There are a lot of areas that mistakes can be made and you might not even know it. And you know, the insurance side isn't gonna point out, well, we owe you extra money here. So, there you go, another thing you can never be ready for. So we're gonna go ahead and get started into the presentation, but I wanted to, uh, before we get into the technical stuff, like, give you some, something enjoyable. All right. So just by the show of hands, uh, anybody, anybody dealt with a large property claim recently or currently? That's all relative. That is relative. Yeah. Yeah. Anything so, so what we've done is we 
we've separated this out. So if you haven't dealt with the claim or you're not currently in a claim, you're in this phase that's pre-loss preparation phase. So there are, there's obviously part of your role is you are taking measures to make sure that if there is a loss, that you're gonna be made whole, right? I, I was telling Jim earlier, because I'm a second career insurance person, and I first started working for a broker, one of the large, largest brokers in the world, and the way I really understood insurance was, well, if you're investing all this money, and you're hoping you never have a loss, but when you do, you expect to recover because that's the return on investment. That's really the only return on investment outside of peace of mind. And Jim said, boy, that sounds pretty good. So once you have a loss, then there's an occurrence, and you know, a claim, if, if, it's, if it's a claim, insurance claim, then you're gonna go through that process, and the ultimate goal is to settle on the claim. But in between, as you go through that process, there are some pitfalls. And so this is what uh, you know, we've done internally, having done a number of claims. You know, most, of, most people think of us as a business interruption because it's a very complicated part of you know, uh, preparing a property claim is the business interruption side. But it's really important to account for both when you're doing it. Now, sometimes we're hired to do just the BI, and it's better when we're involved in the whole thing. You know, I think there's, there's, there's always overlap between the property and the BI. And 90% of the BI claims are going to be triggered by a property policy or a property event. Mm -hmm. So, property is going to define things that we'll touch on, such as the timeline for your BI, the period of indemnity, and such. So, um, it it can be beneficial to have the same individuals involved on the BI and the property side. Mm -hmm. So, so we're going to go into the pre-loss preparation steps first, just to, just to kind of set the stage for the presentation. So you know, this is a really small list of things that go into preparing for a loss. It's just a part of your insurance program. You're obviously going to be placing a policy and you want to make sure that the policy is sufficient for what your needs are. The policy is going to dictate what your recovery is. So. Just because you have an insurance policy doesn't mean that your economic losses will equal your insured losses when the event happens. So you do need to take into consideration what the possibilities are for your specific business, what the remediation. You're going to have various loss controls and BCP plans, depending on what your supply chain is. It may be very complicated, um, but you need to pre, you need to plan for that within your policy and make sure that the wording is correct. And that's something that through risk reviews and policy and policy review with your brokers can be very beneficial. Um, we also have valuation and, and claims team assembly. We'll, we'll dive into that a little bit. When you're placing your policy on, in, on valuation, you just really need to make sure that you're providing proper values on property and VI. So on the property side, you're, you need accuracy because, well, you need the right limits, but also even if you have maybe the right limits, if you've underreported, you could be getting dinged for averaging or co-insurance penalties, or you may not even collect two limits because you didn't give, you didn't disclose fully to the insurance company what the property at risk was, and they're going to apply a, a percentage to it and just give you a percentage of the total. So those are <coughs> extremely important. The BI values you also want to, to report accurately. They're a little bit more complicated generally to come to, but the property has the overlap of the period of indemnity that's going to affect the business interruption. And you know, we'll touch on some potential opportunities down the line because of that relationship. If you can do things in your property remediation to shorten up that period of indemnity and thus save business interruption, you can potentially spend some more money on the property side as an expense reduced loss. Now this, this is a, another area that, you know, and I, and I don't know what your experience has been, but we have clients who, even if we, they've never used us on a loss, they will, they will, they want to meet us and know who they're going to go to when they have a loss. So we call that, you know, preparing your team. And if, you know, you don't want to do it when you have a claim because there's too much going on at that point. And so it's good to meet, know who you're going to go to and make sure, and I think this is the point, that you have the right people Again, you know, to go into the claim with because the insurance company, their the adjuster, they're going to have their auditors. They're going to have a team of experts 
who know very well how to handle a claim. And if you haven't had one in a while, and really, unless you do it every day, it's not a fair fight. The but insurance company has their team assembled that they are professionals, they work together all the time, this is what they do. So they're, they're ready. And they're various members of, of the team. They're going to be internal and external. You're, you know, you're obviously gonna have your broker. You're gonna have <clears throat> internal operations folks. You're gonna have potentially supply chain finance that you want to reach out to and have on board for when you do have a law so you can gather <clears throat> the information. You're gonna have people like us, the forensic accountants that ideally you'd have on the team as well. Any outside engineering help for reconstruction account architects and such will also potentially be on that team. And there's, again, some overlap with that valuation because you'll notice some of these team members might be helping you with the placement, broker, you know, various engineering folks and, and accounts. And it's, it, if you're not aware, which most of you probably are, you, you also can have coverage for experts to involve in your claim. I think insurance companies recognize that it's, it's a it's a burden and it can be tedious and it certainly can be unfamiliar for those within your organization dealing with a, a, a new loss so they you know you can have professional fees coverage that's you know, at least a portion if not all of your loss yeah. varying limits right. and it'll cover varying types of individuals generally it's going to be the accountants and engineers um, and there could be some various wording in there about about um, exactly who is is covered and you're generally speaking, your broker and any public adjusters would not be covered, that they're just part of your claims team. Or public adjusters <coughs> would be part of your claims team at all, but the brokers would just be part of the standard services that you pay for. Yep. So that's the pre-loss side. So now, now we have a loss scenario. 